I'd like to graph some hyperbolas with you. I have the standard form of the equations of a hyperbola written here. I developed those equations in the introduction to hyperbolas video, but I have it summarized here. Notice the equations are very similar, but on the equation in the left, the x squared is the first term, x squared over a squared, and on the right, we have the y squared term first. In other words, on the left, the x squared has a positive coefficient, and on the right, the y squared has a positive coefficient. On the left, notice the hyperbola is opening right and left, and on the right, when we have the y squared first, the hyperbola is opening up and down. Let's use this information and practice some problems. Let's start with this problem. We're going to find the coordinates of the center, the coordinates of the vertices, and of the foci, and then we'll write the equations of the asymptotes, and by the time we're finished, we should have a nice graph of this hyperbola. The equation is y squared over 9 minus x squared over 49 equals 1. Remember, when the y squared is first, when it's written in standard form, we can look underneath the y squared and we'll find that when we take the square root of that number, it tells us how far to go from center to find the vertices. And I didn't even mention, this one is not shifted off the origin, so the center is 0, 0. Let's just write that down. So our center is at the origin. But now we know the a squared is underneath our y squared. So a equals 3. And we're going to go up 3 and down 3 from the center. So our vertices are at 0, 3 and 0, negative 3. Now we're going to use the number underneath the x squared to tell us how far to go in the x. Take the square root of that number, that's 7, and we're going to go 7 units in the x direction. Those don't give us points on the curve, but they give us a couple of points that we can use to draw our central box. Some books call it a fundamental rectangle. So let's draw that box. needs to go through each of those points. And remember, the reason this is important is because it will give us the asymptotes. So I know the asymptotes go through or contain the diagonals of that rectangle. So let me draw this asymptote right here. And right here. And we know that our graph will approach those asymptotes. So I know my hyperbola will look something like this. It's very wide. Now, we haven't found everything. I've drawn the graph, but we haven't found the foci. Remember, the foci are the points that are inside the branches. I don't know exactly where they are, but I know they're up here and down here. To find their coordinates, I need to find C. Remember, A squared is equal to 9. Our B squared was equal to 49. So our relationship between A's, B's, and C's are or is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So I substitute in a squared and b squared, and I solve for c. So we have 58 equals c squared. So I have c equals plus or minus the square root of 58. I can't simplify the square root of 58, so I will leave it as is. So from center, 
right here at the origin, I will go up square root of 58 units, and there's the focus, and down square root of 58, and that's another focus. How big is square root of 58? It's smaller than the square root of 64, so it's smaller than 8. And it's bigger than the square root of 49, so it's bigger than 7, somewhere between 7 and 8. So I would put it right here, about up here somewhere, and down here. Let me erase the others. That's where the foci are for this one. Let's write their ordered pairs. So the foci are at 0 square root of 58 and 0 negative square root of 58. So I have my graph. I have my center vertices and foci. But oh, notice I don't have the equations of the asymptotes. But the graph goes through or the asymptotes go through the origin. That makes it kind of nice. And I can easily see the slope. The rise is 3. The run is 7. So the slope for this line right here is 3 sevenths. And of course, the slope of this line would be negative 3 sevenths. So the equations of those asymptotes would be y equals 3 sevenths x and y equals negative 3 sevenths x. And we have found all the information and we have the graph complete. Let's move on. Here's our next example. We're going to find the same information and graph this hyperbola, x squared minus 36y squared minus 36 equals 0. Notice this one is not in standard form, so we need to put it in standard form. Let's start by adding 36. We don't want that constant on the left-hand side. So when we do that, we'll have x squared minus 36y squared equals 36. And... Remember, we need a 1 on this side to put it in standard form. So we're going to divide both sides by 36. So let's divide each term by 36. And our equation is now x squared over 36 minus y squared over 1. You don't have to write the over 1 part, but if you think you'll forget about it, you can put the 1 there. And we, it equals 1. Now our equation is in standard form. We know that this one is going to be oriented right and left because our x squared is first. And we know that we can move 6 units to from center to find the vertices. Right? We take the square root of the number underneath the x squared to figure out how far to go in the x direction. And again, on this one, I forgot to mention what the center is. So let's find a place to write this information. We'll put it down here on the left. The center is at 0, 0. Now we're moving 6 units in the x direction to find those vertices. So 6 units this way and 6 units this way. So let's write that down, our vertices are at 6, 0, and at negative 6, 0. We'll find the foci in just a couple minutes. In the y direction, we're going to go up 1 and down 1 so we can draw our central box. So up 1 and down 1. So let's do that. And our asymptotes then will go contain the diagonals of that central box, so they will look like this. Do make sure they go through the diagonals. Sometimes I have people draw the lines like this and they sort of ignore the diagonals. And then it makes you wonder what the, the box is even doing there. The box is to help us get an 
accurate representation of those asymptotes. So let me erase that and repair it a little bit right here. So here we go. Here are my asymptotes. So I'm going to draw my branches of the hyperbola heading toward those asymptotes. So it opens to the right this way and to the left this way. Make sure the graph approaches the asymptotes. That's what the asymptotes are there for. Let's find the foci. We know that with the, the foci are C units from center, so let's find C. We know A squared minus, or excuse me, plus B squared equals C squared. Remember, with the hyperbola, this sign right here is a minus, and this sign right here is a plus. So when we substitute in A squared, we substitute in 36. B squared is 1 equals c squared. So let's solve for c. So we have plus or minus the square root of 37. So the foci or square root of 37 units to the right and left of center. So square root of 37 is just barely bigger than square root of 36. So the foci this time are actually quite close to those vertices. So let's write those coordinates. It is square root of 37, 0, and negative square root of 37, 0. And last, we're going to come up with the equations of the asymptotes. We need the slope for that. And we see the slope is up 1 and over 6. So 1 sixth is the slope for this line. And of course, that means the slope for this line is negative 1 sixth. And these lines go right through the origin. So the asymptotes we can write as y equals 1 sixth x and y equals negative 1 sixth x. And we have all the information for this hyperbola represented as well. For our next example, let's graph x minus 4 squared over 25 minus y plus 1 squared over 9 equals 1. And do you notice that this one has shifted off of the origin? Our center is no longer at 0, 0. But fortunately, we find the center for a hyperbola in the same way we find the center for a circle and an ellipse. We can look at the x value right here and see that if we have an x minus 4. That means the x coordinate is at 4. And we have y plus 1. We know that's comparable to y minus negative 1. So our center for this hyperbola is at 4, negative 1. Remember the opposite of the numbers that you see with the x and with the y. So let's put that on our graph, 4, negative 1. 4, negative 1 is right here. I'm just marking that so we can tell what the center is, because remember, technically, the center is not on the curve. Let's find our vertices. We know that we're going to go in the x direction, 5 units. So from center, we move five units to the right and the left. So one, two, three, four, five. And here's our vertex. One, two, three, four, five. And here's our other vertex. So we add five and subtract five from the x coordinate of the center to find those vertices. So it is 4 plus 5 negative 1 and 4 minus 5 negative 1. So that means the coordinates are 9 negative 1 and negative 1 negative 1. And you'll notice that is where they're represented on the graph. Let's go on. <clears throat> we need to 
figure out what this graph looks like. We look underneath the y and we see we, a 9. So we take the square root of 9 and we get 3. So we go up 3 and down 3 from center so that we can get our central box. So up 1, 2, 3, down 1, 2, 3, and now I'm going to draw my central box. Remember, the asymptotes will contain the diagonals of that rectangle. Now we'll draw our branches of our hyperbola approaching those asymptotes. Again, make sure they approach the asymptotes. Frequently, I have someone draw a branch looking like this, and it sort of defeats the purpose of having the asymptote. The asymptote is your graphing guide. So let me erase that and draw it correctly. So it approaches my asymptote. So that's the way our hyperbola looks. Let's move on and find our foci. So we need to find a C. So we know the relationship between A, B, and C is this. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And let me just make a note that we're finding the foci now. So we substitute in A squared. Remember, A squared is the denominator on the first term when it's in standard form. So we have 25, and our B squared is our other denominator. So we have 34 equals c squared. So c is plus or minus the square root of 34. So <clears throat> we're going to move square root of 34 units from center to find those foci. Sometimes people make a mistake and they go from vertex over c units, and that is incorrect. So we start at center and go over square root of 34 units. Square root of 34 is between square root of 25 and square root of 36, so it's between 5 and 6, so it's about right here. So I have one focus right here, and of course one focus here. Remember, we will add or subtract the square root of 34 to one of the coordinates of the center. So we moved in the x direction, so that square root of 34 is going to be added and subtracted to the x coordinate of center. So let's write that out. So we have negative, or not negative, we have 4 plus the square root of 34, comma, negative 1. So I started with this point right here, and I added square root of 34 to the 4. And then I have 4 minus the square root of 34, negative 1. And I can't simplify those. I could get a decimal, but I couldn't simplify those. So I now have my coordinates of the foci. Let me mention this other piece of vocabulary that I haven't mentioned in this video. And that is this axis right here that it contains the foci and the vertices and the center is called the transverse axis. So this axis right here is the transverse axis. We don't have a major and minor axis like we do with a, an ellipse. So we have our center, we have our vertices, we have our foci, we have our graph. What we don't have are the equations of the asymptotes. So let's do that. N notice this time the asymptotes don't go through the origin. But they do go through this point right here. They go through the center, which is 4, negative 1. So I'm going to use point-slope form to find the equations of the asymptotes. So the asymptotes. Let me remind you that point-slope form looks like this. y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So I need the slope. Well, we can look at our graph. We can see the rise is 3 and the run is 5. So a slope of 3 fifths and a slope of negative 3 fifths. Let me write that down. M equals 
3 fifths for one, and m equals negative 3 fifths for the other. So my asymptotes would be y minus the point that they go through is the center, 4, negative 1. y minus negative 1 equals 3 fifths times x minus 4. And y minus negative 1 equals negative 3 fifths times x minus 4. And these are the equations of the asymptotes for this hyperbola. Now, if you needed to, you can multiply them out and put them in slope-intercept form. Just depends on what you're being asked for. But point-slope form is fine sometimes. And if you needed to continue, you could multiply it out and solve for y and put it in slope-intercept form. But this one is complete. Let's look at this problem next. 36x squared minus 25y squared plus 144x plus 150y plus 819 equals 0. It's in general form for a conic section, but it isn't in standard form. But let's first look at how we can tell that it's a hyperbola. You look at the coefficients of your quadratic terms. So I'm looking at these two terms right here and looking at their coefficients. If the coefficients have opposite signs, then we have a hyperbola. So before we can find any of the information that we're being asked for, we need to put this in standard form. Remember, standard form for our hyperbola will look like this x minus h squared over a squared minus y minus k squared over b squared equals 1. Or y minus k squared over a squared minus x minus h squared over b squared equals 1. We need to transform this equation that's in general form into one of these two equations in standard form. And we don't need to know which one of these it will be at this moment. What we do need to do, though, is complete the square with respect to both x and y so that we can make the equation look like one of these two. So let's gather together the terms that contain the x. So we have 36x squared plus 144x, and I'm going to gather together the terms that contain the y, so I have negative 25y squared plus 150y, and that 819 is just in the way, so I'm going to subtract 819 from both sides, so I have negative 819 on the right. Remember when we're completing the square, we need it to look like we have a coefficient of 1 in front of the quadratic terms. So we're going to factor out a 36 from the first two terms. I'm going to leave a little space to add the number that's going to be required to complete the square. And I'm going to factor out a negative 25 from the next two terms. Here's where people sometimes make a mistake. They aren't careful with the signs. I'm factoring out a negative 25 from here. So that means I have a negative 6y left. And now I can complete the square. Half of 4 is 2. 2 squared is 4. So I need a 4 right here. But notice that isn't really 4 that I added to the left-hand side. That's 4 times 36. That's 144 I have just added to the left-hand side. So I need to add 144 to the right-hand side as well. Next, I need to complete the square with respect to y. Half of negative 6 is negative 3. Negative 3 squared is 9. So I'm going to write a plus 9 right here. But again, this isn't really 9 that I added to the left-hand side. It's 9 times negative 25. That's negative 225. So I need to add a negative 225 to the right-hand side as well. 
let's rewrite it. So we have 36 times x plus 2 squared minus 25 times y minus 3 squared equals, and what is that on the right-hand side? Looks like negative 900. Remember, our goal is to make the equation look like this or this. So I need a 1 on the right-hand side. So I'm going to divide by negative 900. So I divide each term by negative 900. So when we simplify, we'll have x plus 2 squared over negative 25 plus y minus 3 squared over 36 equals 1. Now let me erase this down here. I don't need these anymore. Then they're in my way because we almost have it in standard form. I'm going to put the y squared term first because it has a positive coefficient. So I have y minus 3 squared over 36 minus x plus 2 squared over 25 equals 1. And now I can begin the work of stating the center and vertices, foci, and finding the equations. Let's go. So let's start with center. Remember the x coordinate is with the x. It's very tempting just to take the left one as the x coordinate and the right one as the y coordinate. Um, that happens all the time, but take care. The x coordinate is with the x and the y coordinate is with the y. So our x coordinate is negative two and our y coordinate is three for center. So negative two, three. So let's find that on our graph, negative two, three right here. We're going to go in the y direction, six units from that center. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and there will be my vertex. One, two, three, four, five, six, and there's my other vertex. Notice I was adding and subtracting six to the y coordinate. So for those vertices, we are taking negative 2 and 3 plus 6, and negative 2 with 3 minus 6. So that's negative 2, 9, and negative 2, negative 3. And you'll notice that's what they look like on the graph. Let's move on and find the foci. To find the foci, we need to find C. So we know it's A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Our a squared is always our first term if it's written in standard form. So our a squared is 36 and our b squared is 25. So we have 36 plus 25 equals c squared. So c squared is 50, uh, 61. So c is plus or minus the square root of 61. So we know that we can add and subtract square root of 61 to the y-coordinate of center to find the foci. So that is negative 2 comma 3 plus the square root of 61 and negative 2 comma 3 minus the square root of 61. So those points, let's see, square root of 61 is between 7 and 8. So from the center, uh, here's 6 units up, here's 7, somewhere between 7 and 8 units above center. Similarly, starting at center, there's down 6, down 7, and somewhere between 7 and 8. So those are where the foci are, and I've named them here. Let's put the asymptotes in. We've already gone up six units to find those vertices. We know we need to go in the x direction five units so that we can draw the central box. Let me do that. So there it is, and now we'll draw the asymptotes. So the asymptotes were drawn to contain the diagonals of the rectangle. 
And now we draw the branches of our hyperbola. So our hyperbola looks something like this. And last, we need to come up with the equations of the asymptotes. Let's look at the slope. Notice the rise was 6, the run was 5. So the slopes of those asymptotes are 6 fifths. m equals plus or minus 6 fifths. And they also must go through the point negative 2, 3. Remember, they have to go through center, negative 2, 3. So I'm going to use point-slope form of the equation of a line to write the equations of the asymptotes. So they are y minus 3 equals 6 fifths times x minus negative 2. And y minus 3 equals negative 6 fifths times x minus negative 2. And those are the equations of the asymptotes. If you needed to, again, as I mentioned on the previous problem, you can distribute and solve for y and write the equation in slope-intercept form. But often point-slope form is enough.